Mystery Mouse Podcast. My name is Holly and I'm coming to you from Colorado where I live with my husband and my kids and our many pets. And this is going to be a knitting and sometimes crochet podcast. And I just wanted to have a place to talk about my things I'm working on and things I'm interested in. And I hope you enjoy it. So um, the reason I'm called the Mystery Mouse Podcast is because I love books, I love knitting, and I love mouse stories. And so I kind of wanted to put all those things together. And um, this is a little mouse that my son Teddy made for me. He is a really good felt artist. He loves to um, make things out of felt. He made this all by hand out of from a drawing that he also did. So this is my mystery mouse. His name is Arthur Cardigan and he is my mascot. So he is going to be with me as I talk about my um, projects today. Uh, first thing I wanted to talk about is something that I'm knitting for my baby, Grady. He's five months old out of this Debbie Bliss magazine. I loved these Debbie Bliss magazines. I don't have all of them. I think I'm missing the first few issues, but they only came out um, every six months or so. They had a fall, winter, and a spring, summer issue. And I just love them. I, I really miss them a lot. I wish they would do more. But this, um, this project I'm doing is a baby sweater. It's a cabled baby sweater with a hoodie. And it is so cute. I don't do a lot of cabled projects, but um, I really like this one. So I'm doing it out of red baby cash merino. This is as far as I've gotten. My aunt sent me this yarn. She asked me to um, pick out yarn for a project. And so I told her I wanted to knit that in red yarn. And so she sent me the yarn and I love it. And I'm really kind of knitting this slowly because I really enjoy it. I love working with baby cash merino. It's really soft and it's fine so it's going to go slowly so my baby is five months old and i'm going to knit the uh 12 to 18 month size because um i want it to last as long as possible so he probably won't be able to wear it till next year but hopefully he'll be able to wear it maybe maybe at least two seasons and um that is that i think that's all that's in here i need to check this is one of those um baskets from africa and i love it so much Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was this. I'm making a sweater for my son, Toby. He's 11 and he loves knights and medieval things. And I made him a knight sweater when he was younger and it was really stretchy. They finally grew out of it. He kept trying to get into it and it was kind of sad. <laughs> so I'm knitting him another one. So this, I'm just making this one up. I'm doing kind of the same feel is the first one which I did do from a pattern I think it was from a book I got at the library but this is uh this is just gray uh, cascade 220 and I'm doing sort of a knit two rows purl a row and then it's like you have to alternate it's really confusing I still have to figure it out because it's just like it's got a row of garter stitch in between the stockinette and you either have to do two purls in a row or two knits in a row and it alternates so um, I have to really pay attention when I'm knitting this, which is kind of annoying, but anyway, that's the back and I did the front up to the armholes and on the front I'm doing this, this is folded in half, but on the front I'm doing like a, like a panel of blue in the middle with this gold border and I was going to do it on the back too, but I think I was afraid I was going to run out of gold because it's a leftover from something and so it's not even a whole ball. So I decided just to do it on the front. Plus this was taking a long time because I was doing that stitch pattern on the edges, then garter stitch on the, the gold border, and then stockinette stitch on the blue. So I had to really pay attention uh, as to what stitch pattern I was doing where. But this is up to the armholes. This is taking forever and he keeps growing. So I sure hope I get it done. And plus oh, I did a really interesting ribbing. It's like a, a garter ribbing kind of. So I knit every row on the garter part and then on the stockinette part I purled you know on the back so I think it looks really nice it's kind of different but it was still pretty easy so that is living in this little basket from Target 
And I think I'm, I'm going to run out of the gray pretty quickly. I need, this was also left over from another project I did a long time ago. And then I have a lot of this blue. I don't think I'll run out of blue. This is all the gold I have left. I hope it's enough to finish that gold thing. And then I think I'm going to um, like duplicate stitch some kind of night picture on the, the blue part, either an eagle or a lion. He had a lion on his other one. And um, so I'm not sure if he wants the same thing, like a lion rampant or rampant with its reared up on its hind legs. So something like that, I'm going to let him pick. Hopefully I'll be able to find something that he really likes. So that's Toby's night sweater. Um, let's see. I have in this bag, this is just a project bag I made for myself. I think it was like baby fabric, but I love it. I have a project in here for one of my girls. You guys are probably like, how many kids does she have? <laughs> I'll tell you eventually. <clears throat> but anyway, this is for my daughter, Ivy. I'm going to make her a Christmas dress. And with knitting, you know, the hardest part is knitting a lot of fabric. Like knitting shaping is not so hard once you get the basics down. And, um, but you know, with sewing, it's very easy to have a lot of fabric because you already have fabric, but it's difficult to make the things shaped as in like doing sleeves and stuff. So I've done this a couple times where I've knit the top of the dress and then sewn the, the bottom of the dress. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm trying to make Christmas dresses. So this is just a little yoked top, kind of very cropped. Um, Ivy is nine, she's very tall. She's taller than most of her friends who are 10. So she is a very tall girl. But anyway, she's nine, she's very skinny. And this is her little top. And I very loosely um, based it on a yoked sweater in this interweave knit magazine is this, which I think is so pretty. I really wanted to do a, a lace yoke top, but this is like velvet yarn and it's very fuzzy. And I, um, you just couldn't see the pattern. I didn't like how it looked on the back. It's very, it's very bumpy on the reverse stockinette side. So what I ended up doing was just doing the increases around a center stitch. So you can see there's just two little eyelets going down. And they're still very difficult to see, but I figured it'll give it a little bit of laciness without distracting, because it's, like I said, it's an interesting yarn. It's called Velvety Smooth Sparkle. And this is a yarn B yarn, Velvety Smooth Sparkle. And I think I did this in about um, a, a ball and a half. I'm not sure because I knitted kind of like a practice one and it was too big and so then I scaled it back. Now for my other daughter, Mary, I am going to knit this blue one. And she has blue eyes, so that's gonna look really, really nice for her. She is a little bit bigger than Ivy, even though she is younger than Ivy. So, um, I'm kind of using this one to go off of for how much I should add. I like to make up my own stuff and it's not necessarily like I want to write patterns. Maybe I will someday, but um, often I just find that there are things I want to knit with yarn I want to knit with and there are no patterns that are available for the thing I want or I can't get my hands on them or whatever. So I'm, I end up making up my own stuff, not all the time, but frequently. So those are for my two girls and I need to get those done. I'm hoping by like the middle of November so that we can get maybe our family pictures taken for Christmas and they will be able to wear those. It's always hard to find clothes for everybody for the family pictures that, you know, they all look good together and they all look nice and everything like that. So I will be happy to make that for them. Um, next, um, I am making costumes for Halloween. 
for my baby. Well, for everybody really, but this is for my baby. He's going to be a sea turtle. So I crocheted him a shell. Now, these are just hexagons and I've, I've never even crocheted hexagons before. I kind of made it up once again. <laughs> I figured it out because I know how to make a granny square. So I just uh, did it differently so it would end up with six sides and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I thought I was going to do this as the front where I crocheted it together, but I think I actually like this side better. So I think this is going to be the front. I would really like to fill in these gaps in between and I'm not sure how to do it because they're not half hexagons. They're like a little tiny bit of a hexagon and I'm not sure how to do that so I'm going to have to look that up and see because then it would be one big hexagon and uh, it would be nice and flat. I mean if this is how it ends up being for his turtle shell that's not a big deal but I would like to try to figure that out and then I don't think I'm going to sew in all these ends I'm just going to tuck them in and um I'm probably going to put a piece of fabric on the back of this and stuff it so that I might have to line it also so that it doesn't show through the holes. But I'm going to stuff it so it looks more like a shell and make a little backpack out of it so that he can just wear it. And I got him a green sweatsuit, so ta-da! And uh, on, he has a hood on his sweatsuit, so I might put some little turtle eyes on there. I'm not sure, so we'll see about that. But that is his turtle shell. Then for Mary, she wants to be his mama turtle. So I'm just making a bunch of hexagons for her. And I have this bright green. This is Brava worsted. This was um, this was just a ball of Lion Brand Amazing that I had left over. I, I used a little bit of it for something. But it wasn't quite a whole ball. And I didn't have enough. One of these hexagons actually has some leftover uh, tweed from a vest I knitted from, or yeah, knitted for my husband. And it's a little bit thicker, but I don't think it matters. He's a turtle. Um, so anyway, I have uh, some Brava worsted from Knit Picks, and then I'm just using leftovers of other greens that I have. They're all worsted, but I think they're actually all different um, materials. Like one is uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes wool, and then the other one is, I think, some Lion Brand Wool Ease, so it's like wool blend. But um, they're all different colors of green, and so I'm just going to mix them up and knit her a much, or crochet her together. And a much bigger shell because uh, she is the mama. So that is for Mary. Um, and I think those are the only, like, yarn-related costumes I'm making. I'm sewing Ivy's, and Teddy is going to help me with his. He's my oldest, and he sews a lot. And so he's going to help me with his. And uh, so anyway. The other thing that I have in here is um, a project I'm so excited about because it's not time sensitive and I can just work on it when I feel like it, but I am making a little granny square blanket out of my advent calendar from last year. And I'm so excited. I waited and waited and waited. What should I do with my advent calendar? I don't know. Should I use them all together? Because they're very variegated and different looking and I love them all, but I wanted to use them together for the most part, and I wasn't sure what would look good. So I decided on a granny square blanket edged in black. I love how that makes the colors pop. And so I've already done a whole bunch. This was my favorite color. This, um, this advent calendar was from Southern Storytime on Etsy. And um, I've ordered other yarns from her and I got her 12 days of Christmas advent calendar last year and it was white Christmas themed and I really like it I really liked it this was the color for um, the song choreography so if you know that movie this is like I, I love this one it's perfect and I don't remember what all the other names are but I always remember that one because it looks like what it is supposed to be and I really like it I think this one is the carousel club from when uh, Rosemary Clooney goes off so club and it's like you know everything is black and pink so anyway so I have a bunch of those and um I'm really excited because I am getting the southern storytime advent calendar again this year 
and I'm so excited. And it's a 12 days of Christmas advent calendar. So I have 10 20 gram minis and um, because I used two of them before I had the baby, I used one to make him a baby hat because it was blue and white and I'm making baby socks out of one. So I had 10 left. So it's like before I ruin this, <laughs> use up all of my minis on something else, I'm gonna start this. So I'm going to just, when I get my advent calendar for uh, this December, when I open them, because I'm always good, I don't open them early. I, I really look forward to it. I really look forward to it because since it's the 12 days of Christmas advent calendar, I wait till the 12 days before Christmas. I um, am a choir director. We always have a, at my church, and I always have a big Christmas program in the middle of December, and then it's like my Christmas can start after that. So that will be around the time I'm able to start my advent calendar and my Christmas. So anyway, that is what I'm doing with my advent calendar from last year. Uh, I find that I really enjoy crochet as a as an alternative to knitting just because it's different and it is quicker. I feel kind of sorry for people who crochet and then knit because it seems so much slower, especially when you have a learning curve. And people who knit already and then crochet are like, wow, this is relatively easy. There is definitely hard things about crocheting I don't understand. I am not a super confident crocheter, but the things that I know how to do, I feel pretty confident about. So, all right, next, I have a lot of whips and that's okay, it's okay. Um, another sweater for my baby that I'm making is just a flax sweater. And I just started this a few days ago. I love knitting for babies, it's so fast. This is just um, a Cascade 220, something special like effects or something. I should go get a ball band, but maybe next time. And I'm going to, there was a, there was a pattern in a magazine that had a blanket made out of this yarn and this color and it had clouds on it. And um, that's kind of the theme I picked for this baby is uh, clouds and like sky and stuff like that. So what I'm planning to do is just knit this sweater plain and then I'm going to duplicate stitch like a sun on it and then a cloud. And actually I love cloudy days. I love, I would prefer cloudy days to sunny days. Um, we live in Colorado and we get more sunny days here, I think, than Florida does. We have sunshine almost every day. And you know, it does rain here and stuff, but, and we're not like in the desert, like say Arizona or New Mexico really, but um, it just doesn't rain a lot especially at some times of the year. It'll go months without any precipitation or cloudy days. So I love cloudy days. They're special and I feel like they're very relaxing. So I'll probably do a sun with a little cloud kind of in front of it. And, um, but I think that'll be really cute. And actually I have enough yarn, I think, to make myself a sweater to match him, which would be really fun. And I'm hoping just to make mine with uh, just clouds all over it, just, because I love cloudy days and he's my son. So <laughs> it'll be sort of a, a punny sweater. So, but I'm really enjoying that because it's in that nice easy stage where you're just doing the raglan increases and I'm not doing the garter panel. So many people don't do the garter, pan garter panel. And I think that's kind of sad because it's a nice design element and I've made that sweater a lot and I have done the garter panel on it sometimes and I think it's nice, but you know, when you've got other stuff going on in the sweater, Sometimes you just want to keep it simple. So that's for him. Um, I am also doing a sweater for me. This was my birthday cast on. One of the reasons I wanted to start my podcast this month, and we are getting near the end because today is October 27th, I think, um, <clears throat> is because my birthday's in this month. So I thought it would be nice if my podcast was in starting in this month too. So this is a mess, but I started knitting the City Limits sweater by Tannis Fiber Arts. Tannis, what's her last name? It's Tannis Fiber Arts, the City Limits sweater. And this is a sweater where you hold um, two strands, well you can, it's two strands of fingering together and do like color blocking like so you do two strands of the same which is what I'm doing up here 
this is uh, the color Grumpy Cat. Oh, what's her name? I don't remember the dyer. I got this a long time ago in um, House of Yarn in Tennessee when I was on vacation. Oh, what's her name? I don't remember. I'll try to figure it out and let you know. But it's this the color Grumpy Cat. So I've got two strands of that and then I'm going to hold one strand of this with my next color and a few rows. I wanted to use a lot of this up because um, you know, you don't come back to the first color like for the sleeves or anything because it's already on the shoulder. So I thought I might as well. I might do this one a little bit longer than the pattern recommends, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, so far I'm really enjoying it. It's just, uh, I've already done the short rows. So I'm just knitting it around, doing the raglan increases. It has this, uh, um, if you wear it on the reverse stockinette side, it has this garter or um, stockinette stitch uh, panel for the raglan increases. So I really like raglans for my uh, body type. I have small shoulders and I feel like it makes my shoulders bigger and it just sits really well on my body. So I do a lot of raglans. I really like them. And plus, once you have figured them out, they're very simple to, uh, to do. So, and to try and as you go. So anyway, this is the city limits. It's just starting really, and uh, but I'm enjoying it. And I'm really glad that I'm using this yarn because this is all like single skeins of fingering wet yarn that I've had for a long time. And I actually kicked this up probably a year ago and I just never started it because I had some other things that I needed to finish. And I still have things that I need to finish, but it was my birthday, so I decided to cast it on. So that's that. Um, this is a whip that I have been working on for a couple years and it's almost done and I just need to have some accountability, I think, to finish it. I hate doing sleeves. I'm one of those knitters that truly would rather knit three bodies of sweaters than two sleeves because I don't know why. If they're just, your arms are long, it's annoying. Even baby arms <laughs> seem long. But um, this is a sweater I am knitting with a strand of fingering and a strand of mohair silk yarn, whatever, mohair, uh, held together. And um, it's, once again, a raglan. I totally made this sweater up. I did not swatch. And don't, you know, don't do that. But it worked out fine for me. <laughs> it worked out fine. So um, I just sort of kept increasing until it was the arm size was big enough. And, um, and if it's yay. But I have to finish this other sleeve. And it's just going so slowly. I decided to do the body of the sweater. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do it in garter stitch or stockinette. So I did the body of the sweater in stockinette. And I'm doing the sleeves in garter. And... As you probably know, Carter Stitch is more uh, compact lengthwise. So it's taking longer because of that. And why didn't I think of that? Plus I'm knitting in a round. So instead of just knit, 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 I have to knit purl, knit purl every other round. I don't mind purling, but you just have to pay attention because a couple times I've been knitting away past my beginning of the round marker and then you know, it was like, oh, it's turning into stockinette. I got to go back. And that was annoying. But otherwise, this is knit out of minis, 10 gram minis, which I made into a knot, magic knot ball. Oh, I love how this cake looks. It's so pretty. And I kind of did it in like a pastel rainbow. Um, every once in a while, especially in the sleeves, I'm having to like be like, okay, that was enough of that color because I'm trying to keep it the same as the body. Um, so like, I'll be like, okay, you know, the sleeves, the stripes are going to be bigger. So I'm cutting out bits of the, the magic knot ball. I'm just making a new magic knot. <clears throat> and I know some people don't like magic knot. They're afraid it's going to come out. I pull on it as hard as I can, you know, and then I clip the ends real close and then I pull on it as hard as I can again. And sometimes it pops at that point and I have to redo it. But um, if it doesn't come out, by then I figure it's going to be fine. And plus, I'm holding it with a strand of mohair. This is Drops Kid Silk. 
in just a white. I think it's actually off-white. I don't think it's like a bright white, but um, it looks just white. And that's kind of toned down my, my colors, which I really like. I love this sweater. It's going to be so cozy and comfortable to wear. Um, so, but when I, when I take off some extra from my Magic Knot ball, I just put it in another ball. And I think I'm Magic Knotting this together. It's actually been a little while since I've done it. I think I've been Magic Knotting this together. So it's sort of making a, an alternative Magic Knot ball, which I'm sure I'll use for something. Um, I get the, I wonder if I have one in here. Yes. I get the row one. Oh, look at this. I was showing someone how to make a Magic Knot and I did it. The Row One Yarns um, Carnival of Color Club. So every month you get 10 10 gram minis. I think they also have, you can get 20 10 gram minis if you want. And, uh, but I just get the 10. And so I've, you know, I'm trying to use them. They're kind of piling up because I've been getting it for a couple years now, but I'm trying to use them. I'm, I made this sweater. I'm doing some scrap blankets, which are so fun because there's no pressure about scrap blankets. You can just keep doing them forever. Um, so I really, I love having uh, colors to pick from for that. And uh, so I couldn't tell you what any of these colors are, but I love it. And I love that the sleeves are a little bit different, but they're staying in the same color family as the uh, regular sweater. So that is my made up raglan sweater. Uh, my husband calls it my ice cream sweater. So I need to finish that because the, one of the reasons I didn't finish it was because um, I was knitting away in it and I was about at this point last fall and then I found out I was going to have a baby and I was like, oh, I won't be able to wear it for like a whole year. So I just stopped working on it. <laughs> Plus I, I was, you know, excited to make baby stuff and so that's what I did instead. I didn't have to twist my arm because it was the sleeve, which I hate doing. Um, okay. I am knitting a pair of socks for my husband. I have been knitting this pair of socks forever. I don't know how some people, they're like, oh, I knit this sock yesterday. That's not nice. <laughs> um, it takes me like six months to knit a pair of socks. And it's probably just because I, I do it when I'm out, you know? So I knit like in church, I knit a sock or I knit you know, when my husband is driving us somewhere in the car. But anyway, I'm knitting this pair of socks. I'm kind of worried. This is, um, this is just Patton's Croy, which I got at Hobby Lobby. And, um, you know, you have to get two balls because it's only 50 grams. But I feel like I'm going to run out of yarn. And I don't think that I made the leg any longer than usual. Uh, you know, he likes his legs long. And I do a, this is my go-to sock pattern for my husband, which I just, you know, made up. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but it's just two by two ribbing for the cuff for however long I can stand to do it. And then, um, I do a six by two rib on the leg, on the whole leg. And that makes it, you know, hold tight to his leg. And then when I do the foot, I just do ribbing on the top of the foot. So it's like, it ends up being four ridges of pearl and then on the bottom of the foot I just do stockinette so but see the end of his leg is here and I just started doing stockinette in the bottom of the foot this is all I've done on the bottom of the foot and this is all the yarn I have left so I don't know I don't feel like I'm gonna have enough yarn to finish this foot and I'm I think I stopped working on the sock because I think I like got worried about that I guess I should just knit it till I I finish the yarn and see how much left I, I have from very scientifically measuring from one of his other hand knit socks and, uh, and see if I'm going to have to buy more yarn. Oh no. Or, um, I could use something I have probably already. So anyway, but these are socks for my husband. This color is called seventies stripes and he was born in the seventies. So I figured it was perfect for him. Um, they have a couple other, uh, colors that I would really like to get, but I'm not letting myself get them until I finish these socks because they'll just weigh me down. <laughs> There's one called, um, 50 stripes, 
and there's one called um, Mid-Century Stripes, which I think is supposed to be the 60s. I don't know why they didn't name it 60s Stripes, because it's kind of like a yellow. It looks very 60s to me. Um, but I really like both of those. So eventually I would like to get them, but I really, you know, you only have so much money to buy yarn with, and I do not have a huge stash. My family would probably disagree, but I have seen people with a huge stash and my stash is not that big. Um, but I really, I really love yarn. So what else can I say here? I just recently got this uh, interchangeable needle case from Knit Picks. So I just thought I would show you. But it, it was on sale too. And I thought that was nice, but I had been keeping all my needles, all my circular needles in um, like a little round like purse or bag or something and it was not quite big enough and so like the needles that were not interchangeable and were stuck on their cords were like <laughs> were hard to get in there but um this is really nice so it's just got a place for your needle tips and your cables and it's like a little book these are my regular sized uh, needle tips I really like the knit picks needles that's what I use the wooden needles um, and um, my regular size cords are here this is my short tips, and uh, these are so cute. I just love them. And these are my short cords. So um, I uh, I have more needles than this, but they're all in projects or floating around, needing to be rounded up. Um, let me see what else I have. This is a basket my mother-in-law just gave me this summer when they came to visit. And uh, someone in my husband's family made this. So it's, it's really nice. It's really sturdy. So I'm using it to keep a lot of knitting stuff in. Um, let's see. Oh, so, and here's one more, one more project, one more whip. Then I'm going to talk about some dream knitting. So this is a sock I'm knitting for me. I always use DPNs to knit socks. I don't like magic loop. I feel like it's, I don't know, it's fusty. And so I always use DPNs. These are the Crunkled Socks by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. I love this stitch pattern. Um, so uh, I started these. Why did I start them? I started these right before I went into the hospital. So they have been on the needles for, see, like five months. A little, a little more than five months. And uh, I'm doing plain bottom foot and an afterthought heel. I don't think that's in the pattern, but... That's what I'm doing. I always do afterthought heels because then I can just keep going and put in the heel later. This is Knit Picks um, Stroll. I don't remember what the color name is because I've had it for a long time. I bought it, I think, to make a baby knit for someone else. I bought like two different colors and then I decided to use the other color. So um, it's got a little blue in it. It's like blue and yellow and gray. So I wanted something uh, easy to knit in the hospital, so I thought this would be a good, since I was having a baby boy, I thought that would be a good thing. So that is my, and these are Knit Pro Zings. Although, are they not Knit Pro anymore? It seems like, I don't know. Uh, but these are Knit Pro Zings. These are my favorite sock needles, and I only have, I think, one pair. <laughs> but I love them, so. That is what I use to knit my sock. Um, so I need to get, you know, these two, two socks off the needles. I would really like those, um, 70 striped socks to be done for Christmas for my husband. I like to put, um, a pair of socks in his stocking if I, if I have them. Um, so some dream knitting. I got this yarn. I got this yarn on my vacation this summer. We went to Kentucky see my brothers and go to the uh, the Ark Encounter, which I loved. It was amazing. But I, we went to a little yarn store, and I don't remember what it's called. But I got this baby alpaca brush, and uh, I was so excited to see this because I knew I had seen a hat pattern with this yarn, and I loved it. And I've never seen this yarn in person before. I only got these two because I got some other stuff too, and I was trying to, you know, not spend all my money in the world. But um, I came back home. And in this Vogue Knitting magazine, there is a hat in Baby Alpaca Brush 
by Vanessa Putt or Put. So pretty. This has a whole bunch of colors, and I think they had all these colors at the yarn store. But I uh, just got these two. What I really want to do is knit like the cuff in white and then the top in blue, but have the white like um, kind of pixelate up like it's snowing. I don't know if this is going to be enough yarn to make a whole hat, but I hope it is because I think that'd be nice. Just a hat for me. Or I guess if it's too small for me, a hat for someone else. I don't think I have a huge head or anything, so. Uh, another thing that I am excited to do, I want to do some of this for Christmas, is um, I want to make some of these mini kingdom crochet amigurumis. I saw this book on a podcast, and I immediately told my husband to go try to find it for me, and so he ordered it at Barnes & Noble for me, and they got it for me. I love this book. It's so cute. And I'm not a huge crocheter, like I said, but I can crochet. And I actually made this just as a practice. I made this little kitty. And I just made this out of worsted. That's why it's so big. It seems like, I mean, it's not huge or anything, but it's supposed to be made out of, oh, it's got cat hair all over it. Real cat hair because we have cats. It's um, supposed to be made out of like kind of a sport weight cotton. And this is just worsted weight acrylic because I had a bunch of colors and I thought I'd try it. But I think it turned out really cute or she. And um, I am going to try to make um, at least uh, one for Christmas for one of my kids because they have a little night. And remember my son Toby loves nights. So let me see if I can find a picture of the night. They have tons. They have like four princesses, with different hair and details on their dresses. Okay, here's the night. So he is so cute. And um, he has a little horse and a dragon. I don't know if I'd get around to all that, but I highly recommend this book. It's very, very full. There's like um, 30 patterns in here or something. Also, I do really like they have a a beekeeper and a beehive and a bee, which are really cute. And my husband wants to get bees next year. So we are thinking about that. So that would be cute to knit or crochet him, a little beekeeper. To be him. Uh, I think that's all I've got in here for now. Um, so I have a lot more dream knitting that I want to do, but I didn't bring anything else down because I had so many whips. I just thought I'll just talk about whips today. Um, so, uh, a little bit about me. I'm married to, um, David. He's been my husband for the last almost 20 years. We're going to be married in June. And, um, uh, we have five kids, two boys, two girls, and a baby who is also a boy. <laughs> and, um, they are... Great. I love them very much and I love to knit for them and make things for them. I remember when I was growing up, my mom wasn't really a knitter, although I think she taught me how to knit the basics. But you know, she always made things for me. She sewed things for my dolls and she made dresses for me. And you know, I always remember that. And so I love to make things for my kids. I think it's just part of my love language. And um, I love I love giving gifts too, so Knitting is a great way to do that. Also, I just love to make things. I kind of feel like a day without making has been wasted. And so um, knitting is great because you can pick it up and put it down. And when you have kids and you're busy, um, it's just a great craft to be able to, to continue to do even when you have a lot going on. And it's very relaxing too. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed our episode. One last thing that I'm going to do at the end of every episode until I run out of these is talk about a mouse book because I love, like I said, I love mouse books and I love mysteries. So I guess when I run out of mouse books, I'll do a little mystery. Uh, like highlight. But this is a mouse book. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen the Disney movie, The Rescuers. But have you ever read the original book, The Rescuers by Marjorie Sharp? 
it is an excellent book and it's quite different than the movie. Um, I think in the movie they sort of took elements from several different Marjorie Sharp books and have Disney-fied them and made them their own thing. But this book is, um, it's really, I don't know, it's, it's like a fantasy and like a realistic fantasy, I guess you could say, because it's not like magic-y. But um, it has that sort of un, unreal feeling that I really love. I really love it. In this book, instead of rescuing a little girl who's being held in a swamp trying to get a, a big jewel, they have to go to a prison that's called like the Black Castle or something and actually rescue a, a prisoner, a poet, who has been imprisoned for something he wrote, I guess, and get him out of the prison and back to... I think England or some country where he was safe. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, it's a really good book and it's really fun. And it's of course got all those great, um, it's got some great illustrations because it's illustrated by um, Garth Williams, who did like the Little House in the Prairie illustrations. He's a very famous illustrator. And it's got those great like mouse using human things for mouse-sized things like you know using their a pipe for their for their fireplace and using gum wrappers for their wallpaper and it's so cute so i highly recommend this book this is a great book for kids um it's a great book to read to kids it's not a quick read for kids i would say it's not like an easy you know like second grade <laughs> book but it's a great book and I really recommend it. So that's what I'm going to do today. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope that I'll be back in a week or two. Um, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.